us and give us strength and change our life. Okay, and then the sermon can include these points, and these points, you know, we want to relate to the theme. For instance, here the theme is love as God loves us. Okay, so the interpretation of the biblical passage and the example and why, you know, why some people don't love God, why people don't uh, love people. So uh, the why people don't live out this particular nature of God, that to love people, uh, His grace, you know, God's nature and grace. God is love. God is gracious. Uh, he, and God loves us. He gave us gift to, uh, to bring love to people and God rewards us when we love. So we can say, just now I gave you the four points. God gave us the new, new nature to love people. And secondly, He motivates us to love people. And thirdly, even when we don't love people, God tries to turn us away from the sin and turn us to love God. And then when we love people, He's very happy, even when we give a cup of cold water to a little one. So that is motivation by God's grace. And then there is reminder and warning and tell people if we don't love, you know, then uh, he who does not love abides in death. So if we don't love, then we are abiding in love. And then how to live out this particular nature of God. Uh, so uh, now I have a few points that will help you to write the how. First, we can talk about how to clear some garbage, some reason why people don't love, okay? So why, the reason why people don't live out this particular nature of God. So uh, for some people, because they uh, grew up, they grew up in an environment of uh, always, you know, beating and yelling and fighting. And so they, they just don't have love in the family life. They have not experienced love. So, so the first thing we need to clear this garbage, that we need to learn to love God and enjoy His love and peace and motivation so that, uh, you know, when we experience God all the time, then we are changed so that we have more love in our life. So we need that. We need to have Jesus' love changing our life. So that's the first how. First point of the how is to let God change, us, change our life so that He can put love into our life and change our life. And then have a close relationship with God so that God will give us the love of God. And then uh, practical ways how to love, you know, that we care about the people around us. We encourage them, we appreciate them, we say nice things to them, and we tell them about Jesus, we pray for them. So particular things, specific things that we do. Okay, first, clear the garbage, why we don't love. And secondly, have a close relationship with God so that we have more motivation to love. And then third point, we can also motivate ourselves with God's promises, with God's promises, because He has promised us that, that He will reward us when we love people. So we motivate ourselves. When I love God, God is very happy and He'll bless my life. And then four, find specific ways how to love people. Okay, now, let me say again. First, how to take care of the lack of love in our life. life. You know, to, uh, to clear the garbage from the past to how we could not love people. And then secondly, have a close relationship with God so that we have more love in our lives. And then, third point, motivate ourselves with the promises of God. When we love God, God is very, very happy. And then fourthly, specific ways that we can love God. That we care about people, we pray for them, uh, we talk with them, we listen to them. So if we all do that and we tell people to do that and then God is happy with you and God will reward you, then we ourselves are blessing people. And then we train people to bless people. Then, then the people we train, the people we lead, they all have love. Now let me tell you, my members are motivated to love and care for people. Like tomorrow, I have six people going with me on the uh, short mission trip. And uh, they are mo uh, in our meeting every week, we pray for people, each other, we pray for each other. Uh, first, I pray for them, lay hand on all of them, and then, uh, and then they can lay hand on each other, 
and they practice doing that all the time and they also practice how to have a close relationship with God and hunger for God, hunger for God and then how to experience a stronger presence of God, how to experience a stronger p- power of God. And then some of our people, when we're praying, they can experience the power of God and they fall down. Uh, even when we are far away from Him, then they experience the power of God. So we train people to get used to this move of the Holy Spirit. When we hunger for God, then God moves immediately. God works immediately. Uh, so they get used to helping people and they are motivated. And we, I tell them all the time, God loves you. God is happy that you are caring for other people, that you are praying for other people, you are helping other people, and they are motivated to help other people and bless other people. So they enjoy serving God, they enjoy coming to God. Because I enjoy coming to God, I enjoy serving God. So my joy goes to them, spread to them, and they enjoy serving God. So I hope you too have this life, and then you your life will motivate people to love God and then your church will become become stronger and stronger and God will bless your church. Okay, now here is a uh, passage that I'm going to demonstrate to demonstrate how to use this God's nature preaching, preaching method to preach this passage. Luke 5, 8 to 10. When Simon Peter saw it, that when Jesus told them to cast the net on the other side of the boat, and then they caught many fish. When Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet, knees and saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So he, he felt very bad because he is a sinful man. And he, when he, he saw that Jesus was not an ordinary person, that when Jesus told him, told them to cast the net on the other side, then they catch many, many fish. He realized that he's facing a very special person. Uh, at that point, I, I don't know if he, uh, if he really know that he is the Messiah. Maybe at least he knows that he's a prophet. He's a prophet from God, or he knows that he's the Messiah. So he said, "Well, not me. I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy." Okay, so I'm trying to understand the feeling of Peter. So it's very important that when we read passages that we understand the feeling of the people uh, in the passage. So he's he's feeling unworthy. He's feeling, you know, guilty. He feels bad about his sins and he, he, he thinks that he doesn't deserve Jesus to be close to him. So he said, depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So Jesus comforts him and says, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. Okay, now, so how, how can we preach this passage? First, we want to find a theme. Okay? Now, the theme that I see here, I think of is how Jesus accepts us how Jesus forgives us and raises our life to a high level or uses us mightily. Okay? So it can be Jesus forgives our sins and use our life mightily. Okay? So, so Jesus uh, accepts f- uh, and, and forgives the sins of Peter and then he, he wants to use Peter mightily that he's going to uh, catch people. From now on, he's going to catch men. Now, so uh, the so we motivate people to serve God because God accepts us and forgives us. Okay, negative example of people that some people they try to do evangelism, but after a while they give up. They give up and they they're not motivated. They're afraid. They're afraid because they don't have the life life of God because they don't have the you know the joy of the Lord. Therefore, they feel they feel uh, weak. They don't feel motivated. So that's a negative example. And positive examples are people who have a strong presence of God and experience God all the time. They pray to God all the time. They enjoy God, and then they can, you know, their the life just shows Jesus. 
when they talk with the members, they care about the members. They care about the members. They pray for the members. They talk with the members. They listen to the members. So they show the love of God. They show the care of God. So these people, they really have the life of God and their life is bearing fruit. Okay? And then God's nature and grace. First here, in this passage, we can see that Jesus is full of power. He has four knowledge. He knows that when they cast the net to the other side, then they can catch many fish. So he has this foreknowledge. He has he's almighty. He can cause the fish to swim to that area. Actually, he caused the fish all to swim over there. And then when they cast the net, then they caught many fish. So he has this almighty power. And then also, He, uh, he knows that he has a plan. He has a plan to bless Peter. So he knows that one day he'll become a catcher of men. He knows that Peter will become a catcher of men. So he, uh, he has a, a wonderful plan in Peter's life. He wants to use Peter mightily. He knows Peter. He understands him. Okay, so that is, that is Jesus, how He knows people, how He understands people, that He, he has the ability to bless Peter. Okay, and then, uh, so that is about His nature. His nature is His inequality, His ability, and His grace. He accepts Peter. He says to him, do not be afraid. He cares about Peter. He cares about Peter's, he cares about Peter's uh, feeling. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. From now on, you catch men. And so he cares about Peter's feeling. He cares about him. He, he uh, comforts him. He, uh, he comforts us. He's a comforter. And then he promises him, from now on you catch men. You'll be able to catch men. You'll be able to bring many people to Christ. Your life will go to a high level. I'll give you strength. I'll give you power. And also, here is uh, another point of the grace of God applied to all of us. That He gives to us supernatural power and the grace of God and the joy of the Lord and the power of God so that we can be used by God. So He he gives us this uh, spiritual life so that we can serve God with power, with almighty power. So I hope when you see this, that He can bring fruits to our, uh, our ministry. So I, when you, I hope when you see this, you will say, wow, my life can go to a high level because God is almighty. He cares about me. He wants to use me mightily. He can give me strength when we come close to Him, have a close relationship with Him. It's very, very important. It's very important to, to love God and believe in God's love and live in God's love all day long. All day long we'll say, God is loving me. God cares about me. God is with me all the time. God is helping me. God is blessing me. And when I come close to Him, He'll give me strength. He'll give me joy. He'll give me motivation. He'll be with me. So we can enjoy God. Father, we thank you, thank you, because you're almighty God. You're a God of fruits. You have all kinds of spiritual fruits that you bring to us. You can bring, you know, uh, strength to us. You bring uh, fruit of ministry to us. So where does that come from? In John chapter 15, it says that when, we, when you dwell in Christ, and then He'll dwell in us, and you'll bear much fruit. So when we dwell in Jesus, then He'll stay in us. He'll live in us. And then where He is, wherever He is, He has almighty power. He can cause people to grow. He can give spiritual power and give spiritual fruit, fruit of His spiritual life and also fruit of ministry. And so I hope this will motivate us. Yes, we can be catcher of men. If we have this spiritual life, if all our members enjoy God's grace, they enjoy God's presence, 
So first we enjoy God's presence. We enjoy God's grace. We are strengthened by Him all the time. And, ever, and then whenever we preach, whenever we preach, we always talk about the, the goodness of God, the grace of God. Because we're filled with the grace of God. We're filled with the joy of the Lord. We're filled with the strength of the Lord. Uh, because we come close to God all the time. So we have the fruit of life. And then we can, you know, bless people. We can help people. And then our joy, our strength, our spiritual fruits will show in our life. And when people see that, they will be attracted to us. So I hope that that will happen to you. That your life is full of the spiritual power of God. Your life will be filled with uh, God's presence. And then He will bear fruit to you. Okay, so that's God's grace. He can cause Peter. He chose Peter. He accepts him, forgives him, and he can change his life so that he can serve God with power because God gives him power. God gives him the presence of God. When, whenever there is the presence of God, there is power. So I hope you spend time loving God every day. Spend time loving God. God is so good. I enjoy God. I enjoy God. I enjoy God's presence. And then we are strengthened by God all the time. Okay? So, uh, God's nature and grace. And then reminder and warning. So when people don't have a close relationship with God, what happens is, then they will, you know, they have no strength. They will burn out. They, will have, they won't have much motivation. And they just use the law. It's just always telling people, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's always commanding people, telling people what to do and criticize people when they cannot do it. So when people do that, the people become dry. You know, you notice that the Bible is full of promises. That the Bible promises that when we come to Him, you know, for those who love Him, you know, the river of living water will flow from the belly. That the Bible is full of promises. When we come to Him, we'll find rest. All those who are weary and burdened, come to Me, and I'll give you rest. So. Jesus has given us promises all the time and we should be preaching about Jesus. We should not be just telling people what to do. Now, we should tell people what to do, but uh, it's very important we tell people about God, what God is doing, His grace to help us. So the warning is that when people don't have the grace of God, then they are dried up, they don't have strength. And then how? Okay, how? Now first, again, I say clear the garbage. Clear the garbage. Do we have anything that blocks us from having a close relationship with God? It could be laziness, okay? Or we don't think that God can give us strength because some people pray and they don't have much strength. Now, how do we pray to have strength? The how? To believe that God is full of goodness and kindness. God is full of good things. First, it's very important that we believe that God is full of good things. So when we come to Him, we'll be blessed by Him. He is very happy to bless us. And then uh, what the, pre the reason why people don't have that because they don't, are not worshiping. They don't believe that God blesses them. And they don't have a close relationship with God. And they don't have a close relationship with God. They don't have, you know, they don't learn to pray with the Spirit. So they pray, they just give people a... a, a a list of things they want. They just want something. They just want something from God. It's not a relational prayer. We want to build a relationship with God. We want to have a close relationship with God so that we have strength from God. Instead of just, you know, giving God a list, a shopping list. Lord, I want money. I want a wife. I want children. I want uh, a ministry. I want a big church, you know. Some people just want, and then they don't have much strength. But when we believe in God's goodness and we enjoy God, we say, Lord, you're so wonderful. Thank you for your wonderful grace. Thank you for your love. You're so wonderful. You're full of grace. So it's very important that we first have this life, that we clear the garbage. Why we don't have strength? Because of laziness, because the way we pray is just a, a shopping list to God. Uh, or because we are blocked by sins, uh, blocked by lack of faith, blocked by uh, 
problematic relationship with people. Now, some pastors even have problematic, problematic relationship with their wife. They don't pay attention to the wife. They think, I just pay attention to ministry. And then the wife becomes unhappy. And then they, they suffer from the relationship. We cannot get strength from that, like that. We need to have a close relationship with God. And then we build up relationship with people. We bless people. We're kind to people. When we're kind to people, that Jesus, you know, the Bible says that to love your wife as Christ loves the church. So when we love the wife and the children and the members, we love everyone we have contact with, then our life will touch the life. That our love will touch them. So, but if a pastor, they have all kinds of frustration, they're unhappy, they, they don't have a, a good relationship with the wife, then what happens is they, uh, they suffer from the marriage instead of having strength from the marriage. So I hope we all have strength from the marriage, that we enjoy the wife, we treat her nicely, and then we are kind to her, and then, sh then she'll be, normally then she'll be kind to us, and then, then we can have more strength, we enjoy life. It's very important we enjoy God, we enjoy people, we enjoy ministry, we enjoy everything God is doing in our life. That way, we have an enjoyable life and have strength, okay? So take away the garbage. What happened? What stops us from having a close relationship with God and have strength from God? Or people just want money. Some people just want money. They just look for money. When they just look for money, they, f they don't get money. We want to look for God. When we love God and treasure God, you know, I really treasure God. I like God very much. Because God is full of blessing. He is full of grace. I like Him very much. When I like Him very much, my life shows how much I like God. You know, many people told me, when you talk, you always talk about God. You always talk about the goodness of God. I thank God for that because God is full of goodness. So I, every day I'm filled with the, the goodness of God. I'm filled with, I feel with appreciation of God's grace and love. So I enjoy God all the time. I enjoy His grace all the time and I'm motivated. So the how, clear the garbage. Some people have naked thinking about God. Some people are lazy. Some people just pray with a shopping list. Some people have frustration in life. They don't take care of their sins. They are filled with sin. And when they are filled with sin, they don't have the blessings from God. They don't see that it's important to take care of problems in their life. And they don't see that it's important to please God by loving God and loving people. Some people don't, they don't sincerely care about people. They just care about the ministry. They just want more people, more money. They don't sincerely care about the people. You know, God sees that. We cannot escape His eyes. He can see it. He, he's our, he can see our heart. He searches our heart. So we'll say, Lord, uh, I want every action of mine, every thought of mine to be pleasing to you. Everything I do would be pleasing to your sight. Then God is pleased with us and God will bless our life and God will change our life. And then, um, so, uh, and we believe that God has a wonderful plan in life. He's going to use us. And when we have sins, we know that Jesus forgive us, so we don't have to be held on to, uh, we don't have to hold on to our guilt feeling. We say, when I repent, God is very happy to forgive me, and He'll for sure forgive me, and He'll cleanse my soul, and He'll give me strength. When I come close to Him, we'll have strength all the time. And the strength is for blessing people. The anointing of God is for blessing people. Some people just want the anointing to just to show off to people. For instance, I use an illustration. Some people, when they lay hands on people, they like to push people. I've seen many pastors do that. God doesn't like that. You know, it's not for showing people, oh, how many people you pray and then fall down. People see that. You know, one time when I uh, was, uh, you know, I, I led a meeting 
And then a church member of another church came up to me. He said, I noticed that when you pray for people, you just touch them and then they fall down. But when I look at my pastor, it was a woman pastor, she pushes people. So that is not a good example. The, the member can see that. She's just pushing people. It's not the power of God. So they just want to catch it attention of people. The, they want people to think that they're great, but that actually is doing the opposite. People see that you are showing off. You're not really, you don't really have the power of God. No, when I train my people, many of my people have this power of God. When they love God, when they pray for people, people can, can experience this power even without touching. People can fall down under the power of God when, when my members pray for them. So when they all learn to please God, to do things to please God, to do the right things that God is pleased with, then God is happy with us. And then have mercy on people, catch people. We want to catch people. So we want to have mercy upon people, to be kind to people, kind to our neighbors, kind to whoever we come across. We want to be nice to them, to bring them to Jesus. And then we, when we bring them to Jesus, we let them know how wonderful God is, and we pray for them to experience God, and we let them know God is very good and God wants to bless you. And when you experience God, it tells you that God, is, God wants to continue to bless you. So the whole, whole sermon just now I demonstrated follows the theme that God forgive us and then He give us uh, the ability to catch people, to bring more people to, to Him, to serve God, to give us the power to serve God. So um, now let me summarize briefly again, okay? So here the theme is that God accepts us, forgives us, and He gives us the ability to serve God with power, okay? So negative example is that some people, they are filled with guilt, or they just don't have the motivation to serve God or to be kind to people, to love people, and so their life is not bearing fruit. And then good examples are people who, who love God, to follow God, and have a close relationship with God, and then they, they really bear fruit. Okay, God's nature and grace. God is a forgiving God. God is a powerful God. He knows our needs. He, he has ability to help us to be able, able to have our good results in ministry. He can give us spiritual gift and spiritual power. He can cause us to have good fruits. Okay, He has this grace. And then when we have, when we respond to God, when we repent he, His grace, just now I talk about nature. Nature is His inner quality. His inner quality of He knows people, He has the power to uh, understand people and the power to change people to give people the ability and spiritual gift to bless people. So God has this ability. And then His grace. His grace is that He forgives us. He accepts us. He's kind to us. And then He uh, gives us the motivation to... He now, I, I, I told you earlier, first He changes us. He gives us a new nature to bless people. Secondly, He motivates us to bless people. He... Uh, and then even when we don't have this motivation, He'll try to draw us to Him. And then when we serve God, when we obey God, He's very happy and He'll bless us. He will give us spiritual gifts. He'll give us reward. So these are the grace of God. He will help us to make sure that we'll bear much fruit. And also His presence will bring results. His presence will bring joy and freedom and love. And this will attract people. Our life will attract people when we have the love and the joy of the Lord. Okay, and then uh, warning, a reminder and warning that when people don't have a close relationship with God, then their life will, will not have much strength. And then they will not bear much fruit. They will have, they have no motivation to serve God and not much fruit. Okay, and then how? How first we clear the garbage. Why people don't want to serve God. Why people 
don't have a close relationship with God because they're lazy, they don't spend time praying, they don't see that God is precious, they, so they don't spend time praying to God, they don't spend time building up the, the, uh, the relationship with God. And then they don't respond to the Holy Spirit. So we want to clear the garbage. If we are lazy in spiritual life, we don't have strength from God, we need to repent and ask God to help us. And then uh, we, we, uh, we want to clear the garbage of not caring about people, not caring about souls, the lost souls, that we ask God to forgive us. Lord, have mercy upon me so that I'll repent and I will uh, have compassion on people. And also some people, because of the garbage in the spiritual life, they, they sin, they don't have a good relationship with the husband and wife, with the children, with the members. So they, they, they have all kinds of garbage that blocks the life. So we need to clear the garbage. So the how, always talk about clear the garbage first. And then secondly, how to have a close relationship with God, to have strength from Him. And then thirdly, how specifically to live out His grace. How to first repent and then how to have a close relationship with Him, to have strength from Him, to have spiritual uh, life from God so we are filled with joy all the time and believe that whenever we come to God, God is very happy. So we have joy all the time when we praise God. We know that God is happy when we praise Him. So God is happy, I can be happy too. And then I can uh, uh, pray more for people so that we care about people. And then we, we talk to them, we listen to them, we care about them, and then we can catch more people and then have faith that God can use us when we have a good spiritual life, okay? So the whole message is related to that Jesus forgive us and raise us up to a high level, how we can apply this to our life, okay? Um, okay, and then here, Jesus motivates us to pray by His promises.